everybody to Project You, Project Me, removing fear and understanding into another business. And today we've got the fantastic Chris Pugh, who um, I've known for a long time, but has also set up all the partnerships through the FTG with Colas Real. So Chris, how are you? I'm very well, John. Pleasure to be here, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Um, now, before we start, Mandy and I went down to Colas Real. Um, pre-Christmas and kind of had a little bit of a tour and what we found was Call Us Real is actually a match to the military. So whether it's stores, whether it's logistics, whether it's, you know, moving people around, whether it's driving, whether everything was there. So, you know, this opportunity and the atmosphere was a little bit like that as well. It felt a little bit military-esque in there where people were all having, a you know, a good a good laugh and even mm -hmm. meeting all the management. They, they were... Um, you know, good fun as well. So military people will fit right in. But tell me a bit more about yourself, Chris, before we start you. A little bit about your past, maybe where you grew up, what you did when you kind of left school, joining the military, because that's where you went. And actually, you know, what your job is now. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, I was brought up in the West Midlands, in the Warsaw area. Um, went to school, done well at school, but kind of always knew. So my father was in the army. He was in the... Um, uh, the Royal Lancers, the 16th, 5th Lancers. And I heard the stories and stuff like that. And it was kind of a somewhere I, I always knew and a fit that I always wanted to go down. Um, I was in the Army Cadets growing up and my dad kind of pushed me that way. And then I left school, went into sixth form, thought, well, what am I going to kind of do myself? And it was always that sort of burning thing in the back of my head, right? Maybe the Army, maybe the Army. And that's what I did. Went to the careers office up in Birmingham. Mm. Um just after the uh, the first Gulf War, so sort of around about late nineties, something yeah. like that. Um, and yeah, and then joined the Royal Signals uh, in ninety one. Done my basic training through Catrick and, and and that sort of stuff. Went to uh, Bulford. Well, met you, John, there in Bulford. Um, spent some time. Done. Went went to Bosnia and a few places like that. Left the army round about sort of late ninety eight. I think it was when I left. Um, at that time, telecoms was kind of booming. Everyone was getting mobile phones, networks were growing. And it, it was literally a case of um, people kind of waiting outside the camp, really saying, come and work for us. If you leave the army, this is what you can get and this is what you can do. So for me, that, that transition that is so difficult and I, I appreciate it was kind of not easy, but there was there, there was a job kind of there because it, the industry was growing. So I left the army, um, went straight into telecoms, done that for about five years. And then a friend of mine who I worked with at the time, uh, he came to uh, Colas, says, what do you want to, why don't you come work on the railway? And I was like, well, you know, what do I know about the railway? Um, put my CV in. Um, that was 20, nearly 21 years ago. And, I, and I'm still here today. I'm now the senior trainer assessor for rail services on the plant side, responsible for all the competency management, training, uh, delivery of training and documents and standards for, for our organisation. So yeah. That's kind of in a nutshell fantastic and i just wanted to kind of just show you this um this this was was kind of um should i give it to me stolen yeah from so, by the way, from I, want that back one. I thought i would i thought i would just wear it today just to kind of show that we were in support of Colas and um fantastic it was a fantastic day but should have used that at the start but um so your um your role now what does that entail completely so we, we look after everyone's training and competency, whether they are brand new to the railway industry. So people. So, uh, we, people. Yeah, so whether, whether it's people straight from the uh, 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 from the military or, or just coming through you know, normal, normal avenues and stuff like that. So we're responsible for sorting their training out, their planning, their organisation, making sure they remain competent. Like the military, the railway is, is heavily governed and there's a lot of process and procedures that we have to follow and abide by. So it's our job as the, the, the training department and standards department to ensure that we follow the right standard and ensure that the training is, is, is to a, a sufficient level. Yeah. OK. So what would it what would it, you would be looking for in a, in a kind of military person, a service leave that kind of thing? Um, and which kind of skill sets do you fit, see fitting in there? To, to be honest, the, the, the skill sets it depends. As you as you know, John, when you when you came around uh, the building, Carlos is such a massive organisation. 
Um, and there's roles to, to suit everybody. And one of the things that we, we really like about the, the military personnel um, is their ethos, their, their, their professionalism, their outlook on and the way they want to project themselves and obviously their work ethic as well. Yeah. We don't expect people to come with all the necessary skills and, and documentation and certification because a lot of the training is bespoke and it's given in-house. But some of the things that they come to us with, that, that, that planning and rostering, that, those logistic skills, strategy, maintenance, engineering, communications and signaling, commercial finance, they come across with this in abundance. And they share our core values, so our, our care, share, dare sort of values and policy kind of match the military sea drills quite well. Um, so the reason why I think a lot of people fit from the military into Colas is because it feels normal, it feels comfortable because it's a similar environment and a similar ethos. Mm -hmm. But it's <clears throat> the thing about real, I think, is people don't really understand it. Um, Absolutely. And it's not something that everyone goes, I'm just going to go into real. I, th I think a lot of stuff to do with real is I'm going to be a train driver or something like that. Yeah. But there's a there's probably a million different jobs that they could go into. Absolutely. Um, and I think it's important to do chats like this and, and little podcasts like this to to show people that you know what real could be something yeah. that fits you well. Um. So if a service person, for for example, is watching this, we we have different ways of getting through to you. What's what would you suggest they do? or what qualifications would you see would fit them well, that kind of stuff, and how can they get in touch with you? Well, I'd, I'd definitely go onto Coalas's website. We've got an excellent website where people can look at what Coalas do. They can yeah. look at the various areas within Coalas, like we have our infrastructure, which is everything that the rail, the, the trains kind of sit on. So everything that makes sure the train goes around the network, that's done on our infrastructure team. Yeah. We also have our rail services teams, which uh, deliver our freight and our plant and our engineering operations. We have our Midland Metro, so around the West Midlands, the, the MMA, which is, is also done by Coal as well. And we have our sort of services and our HQ, which is all our legal, our finance, our health and safety. The best thing to do is go onto the website and have a look, and then they can, they can go through the, the job stuff. So the careers page, they can select areas where they want to work and different roles that they want to look at. And there's lots of jobs on there, but also through your brilliant website as well, just contacting through through the FTG. Obviously, going through, straight through the FTG, come straight to us. There's no automated machine that filters all the calls and everything else. Like we'll we'll deal with everyone sort of in person and take everyone on their own merit. Yeah. But yeah, go go through our website and go through your website to get in touch. Yeah, fantastic and. You know, I think it is worth seeing to understand more about the rules. It is well worth going onto the website and just having a little bit of a read of, of what they all are and how they fit. And of course, we have a direct inquiry form, which um, Chris is talking about, in which you can then inquire about any of that. And maybe it might only be a conversation to start with, but actually you might have you know a couple of questions to, to try to understand whether you would fit a service lever moving into one of those roles that they can see. So yeah. these are the things that we can get to them very, very quickly. So that's fantastic. Um, and I know lots of people have come across and we've had some success yes. lately. Um, absolutely. Now, when we're looking at locations um, and salaries, now I don't expect you to just say these are the salaries yeah. for each person and stuff like that, but we could probably do some kind of ranges. You know, locations first, what would the stereotypical location and what could that look like for service people? Again, John, it, it kind of depends on the role. If you're more of an office-based person, it could potentially be around the London and rugby area because they're kind of our main sort of areas where the office-based uh, staff are worked. Yeah. If it's engineering, you could be looking at our, around about our depots. But as you saw, the big, we've got a massive depot in rugby. We've got other depots dotted around the UK as well. If you go onto our sort of on-track machines, we have various contracts running from all the way down south to all the way up north. So depending on the area where you go to work um, and the contracts that are in those areas, it could be close to home or it could be a little bit further away. But depending on the role, so if, it, if it's like, say, one of our on-track machine driver operator fitter roles, they're given a company van to take them to and from a place of work. They're also put up in hotels if it's, if it's a... You know, if it's okay. a longer drive for them to, to be able to do the work. 
So it kind of depends. When you look on the website, it, it'll, it'll say sort of areas that you can check throughout the country. So you can look in your area. Um, but don't be put off by if, the look, if a, a suitable job is in your area, always look at that and always potentially apply for it because there may be remote working as part of that job. Or it may be you can, you, we can do that work from remote locations as well. So it, it's, it's kind of anywhere, really, anywhere throughout the UK, depending on the role that the, the, the candidate wants to look at. Yeah, and I'm taking it salary is always going to be um, against, like, you know, dedicated roles and things like that. Absolutely. Um, well, I mean, what I can say is, is Coal Ash Rail are very competitive with their salaries. Um, there's obviously industry standards for de- for certain roles and, and Coal Ash are, are right up there with, with that. So, yeah, um, the best thing to do is, is on the website, it doesn't have salaries, would be to contact our recruitment team and they would be able to give more information on the salaries. But yeah, depending on the role would obviously depend on the salary. Yeah, roger that. And what we'll finish on is something that's kind of just been, uh, it's quite new in what we're trying to do. Actually, um, we tried to influence military spouses a while back, but we got it wrong. The reason we got it wrong was because we tried to, give jobs to military spouses the same way as we would do to ex-forces, service yeah. leavers, blue light leavers. The problem is the military spouse has a different dynamic. Generally, a service leaver, an ex-forces person, blue light, are going to be pretty much stationed where they're going to finish up. Mm-hmm. Whereas a military spouse, in theory, if we're talking about people who are still serving and the spouse is living in a location, um, they need the ability to change. They need the ability to have a career. Now, through Call Us Real, is that something that will be looked at? Is that a possibility for the future as we start to grow to say, actually, you could get a job in rugby, but actually, if you then move down to Bristol, we will be able to continue with that yeah. progression in your career, keep the great person, and also they keep their great job. So actually, the effect on the individual and the family has been removed just by having yeah. that career look at life. Was that something that Call Us would be able to do? Absolutely. One of one of one of Colas's kind of um, sort of mantras is is our our people are our greatest assets, and and I really truly believe that, and I and I and I back that up entirely. We we recognise talent within that business, whether it's male, whether it's female. We recognise talent, and we want to keep that within our organisation. And we do have people who've who've started careers in one area, um, and then they've moved to certain obviously other locations as well. But just having um, you mentioned about spouses coming into into the railway. Colas is involved in lots of projects um, to promote women in railway, to promote women in engineering. We're having um, events for International Women's Day. We're also obviously in contact with yourselves and, and, and Mandy at the FTG to promote spouses and, and partners coming into Colas. But yeah, it's something that Colas is passionate about and they support 100%. And, and I think, we, we, like I said, we spoke about this before, John. It's not just that service personnel that's going through transition. It's their partners, it's their wives, it's their husbands, it's their spouses. And I think that's one of the good things about the partnership that we've got together with Colas and yourselves is, is we recognise that. And we're not just singling out the, the individual who's leaving. It's a whole package for the family. And Colas fully supports that, yes. Yeah. I think that's the secret to success in the future. We, we must look at the whole family, the whole community, yeah. bigger picture rather than just saying it's a job or nothing. Um, and certainly that's the way that we're going to start looking at things, especially when it comes to two spouses. Um, yeah. Because the reality is their other halves are probably still serving if we're talking, yes. you know, so and, and may have a long longevity within that mm. environment still. Um, okay, Chris, well, you know, as always, it's fantastic to see you. Um, no doubt, Colas are going to be kind of long-lasting partner of the FTG, and actually, will probably take us into the the future um, to where we want to be and become that sustainable business that just continues to create more good process and more good product at the end of it. But thanks so much for coming on today. I know how busy you actually are, and I, I know your diary. Um, so to give up 30 minutes to 60 minutes or, or whatever is it actually takes a lot out of your um, your your time during the day. But um, long, long may this last. Um, I've got no doubt we'll see you again very, very soon at the next shows.
Absolutely. My pleasure, John. Thanks Great. for having me on here. Appreciate Cheers, it. Sir. Cheers, sir.